بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله it's good to see everybody um, I know that the hall might not be as full as it was uh, before but I was uh, observing and just kind of watching uh, and I was really impressed by everybody and how much attention everybody was paying. Everybody really seemed to be dialed in and that's more than what you can ask for. So really wanted to appreciate everybody for paying uh, uh, for paying attention and really trying to understand uh, what you know everyone is trying to communicate here from the stage. The topic of the session is radiating beauty. It's talking about the idea was that how Islam, whenever it went, wherever it went, and whenever that was, the beauty that Islam radiated, the beauty that the Muslim community radiated, the, the, the appeal that the Muslim community always had throughout history, throughout time. And when I, I really sat down and thought about this for a very long time, um, there were a lot of great suggestions, um, and I thought about it for a long time, what to talk about in this particular session, and it actually occurred to me la late last night or early this morning um, that when I look at the Quran, when I look at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and one of the most powerful forces that you find in the Quran, that you find in the life of the Prophet sallallahu that jumps out at you and really draws you in. And when you study the history of Islam that you see that it pulled people in. It was like, you know, for a nerdy reference, it was like a tractor beam, right? Like it would grab people and would not let go of them. People seemed, you know, it's very interesting because on one side, obviously, the accusation from the disbelievers at the time of the Prophet ﷺ is that he's a sahir. He enchants people. He does, you know, he, he does some type of, he puts them under a spell. And that, of course, was false. But people really just completely um, were... People gravitated towards the Prophet ﷺ and they were not able to pull themselves away from him and what he presented. And when I thought about what was it about the Prophet ﷺ, what is it about Islam? And the Islamic manner and the Islamic lifestyle that had that effect on people throughout time, wherever Muslims went, I thought about an ayah of the Qur'an. This ayah is from the end of Surah At-Tawbah. And in this surah, surah number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah says something really profound. At the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He introduces the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us. And the introduction of the Prophet sallallahu that Allah provides is something worth listening to. It's a very famous ayah, maybe you've heard of this before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ I'm going to try to break this up into little bits and pieces. I'm going to try not to get too nerdy and try to analyze every single word. But uh, at the same time, I want you to appreciate what Allah is saying about the Prophet ﷺ. What Allah is communicating to us about the Messenger ﷺ for us to take note of and take home with us. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Allah says that most definitely they, care, they came to you. Most definitely there came to you. Right off the bat, one thing that Allah tells us is that the messenger went to the people. He didn't wait for the people to come to him, but he went to the people. He knocked on their doors. He went and visited them. He sought them out. He looked for them. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ A messenger of all people. The highest station any human being can occupy is to be a messenger of God. To be, to be selected by Allah, to receive divine revelation and inspiration from God Himself. And so that man, he came to you, min anfusikum, and he was from amongst you. He was one of you. He grew up with you. He walked on the streets with you. He spoke your language. He knew who you were. He knew you by name. He asked, when he met you, he didn't just ask how you were doing. He asked you how your mom was doing. And how your father was doing. And how were your kids? And how was your wife? And how was your brother? And how was your uncle? He was from amongst you. Min anfusikum. And then comes the really powerful part. Azizun alay. Azizun alay. It is very harsh on him. It is very heavy on him. 
What is so heavy on him? What weighs on him? What weighs him down? Ma anittum. The difficulty that you experience is heavy on him. Think about that. The difficulty you experience is heavy on him. Harisun alaykum. Haris, the word hirs in the Arabic language is used for like greed. To want something, to desire something. It's like a very natural desire. Harisun alaykum. His natural default position was, want, was, was to want what was best for people. He is fully invested into your well-being. Bil mu'mineen, when it specifically comes to the believers, and this is a very subtle point here that I'd like to kind of touch on, but I don't want to talk on about this too much. There's a very weird dynamic we have and a very bizarre understanding or implementation we have of what we call akhlaq or character or as the Imam, the Sheikh was mentioning about ihsan. We have a very bizarre implementation or understanding of it. We, do, we take akhlaq and ihsan and all these, these, the good character and good manners and good disposition, right? We take all of that and we practice it with people that are on the outside of our lives. We practice it with strangers. We're very nice and polite. We hold doors open for people. We say please and thank you. Yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. Right, we're very nice and polite and appropriate. Yes sister, thank you brother. Very, very nice. And then but within our own home, we talk to each other like, like savages. Hey! Like what happened to all the politeness? Like one second, you'll see a guy, he'll be like, yes sister, how are you sister? Very good sister. And he'll turn to his wife, he's like, hey! And it's like, what just happened to you? What happened to the yes, hello, nice, thank you very much? What happened to that? Right? To other people's kids, we'll be like, oh, come here, how's it going, mashallah, he's so cute. Hey, stupid, come over here. It's like, what? Why would you talk to your own kid like that? Right? Or even within the community, we have this bizarre, this, this, this strange like application. Like dare I say that when we're at work or in a supermarket or at the mall, we're very nice and polite, we'll let people go first. But then when we're standing in line for food at the masjid, we're like shoving people out of the way. And we're being rude and obnoxious to other people, right? We'll pull out our phone and start talking, stand, sitting right next to a guy who's like praying his sunnah is nawafil. And we're like, hey, hey, ha, ha, what's going on? Like, what's going on? The guy's praying, right? So there's this very bizarre implementation. But the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bil mu'mineen? With the believers though? Who are the believers? Think about who the sahaba were. The Sahaba were people who had pledged their life to the Prophet ﷺ. They would give up their lives for him. He didn't have to win them over. He had all, they, were, they were already in. They were in. They weren't going nowhere. He didn't have to win them over. But specifically when it came to the believers, Ra'ufun Rahimun, ex extremely compassionate, always merciful. So this powerful comprehensive ayah is a very thorough introduction to who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I think about this though, and try to summarize this into an idea, the word that comes to my mind is empathy. The, the, we are so distant from the idea of empathy, let alone the practice of it, that we don't sometimes even know what the word means. We know it sounds something kind of like sympathy. Sympathy is to understand where somebody else is coming from. It's to acknowledge somebody else's pain. Empathy is to feel their pain. To feel their pain. The Prophet ﷺ exhibited this beautiful, unbelievable quality of empathy. And I want to share very quick rapid fire, so try to stay with me. I just want to share a couple of examples of this empathy in regards to different people. How he would practice his empathy with different people. It didn't matter who it was. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam When Ikrimah the son of Abu Jahl Abu Jahl was the man who had declared war against the Prophet Sallallahu the Muslims and Islam. He had killed Muslims just for believing. He had tortured Muslims just for believing. 
and he was at the head of multiple plots to assassinate the Prophet He eventually led an army into the battlefield with the intent of killing the Prophet and as many Muslims as possible. This man made it very clear what his position was in regards to the Prophet in Islam. And eventually died with those same convictions. His son who had fought by the side of his father and in fact continued his father's work after his father's death. He is now coming to Mecca to meet the Prophet ﷺ after the conquest of Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he receives the news that Ikrimah is, has entered Mecca and he's on his way to see you, the Prophet ﷺ turns to his companions and he says, his father's name was Amr bin Hisham and they used to call him Abu al-Hakam because he was a leader of his people. But the Muslims used to call him Abu Jahl because of his actions and his conduct. The Prophet turns, he turns to the Muslims, the believers, and he says, Ikrimah is coming. And I am hopeful that he will embrace and accept Islam. In his presence, none of you should refer to his father as Abu Jahl because it would hurt his feelings. Even if he becomes a Muslim and he recognizes that his father was wrong in his beliefs and his ideas and in what he did, it is still his father and it would hurt his feelings to hear people, his new brothers and sisters in faith, to refer to his father as the father of ignorance. So do not refer to him as Abu Jahl in the presence of his son Ikrimah. This is the graciousness of the Prophet This is his empathy. He was able to put himself into Ikrimah's shoes and understand how he would feel in that situation. One of the main conspirators against the Prophet the head of the Munafiqun, the hypocrites, in Medina, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulul. When his son comes to the Prophet saying that my father has died, and I know that he was completely opposed to you. And he said terrible, reprehensible things about you. But he was my dad and I worry about him. The Prophet ﷺ on the spot removes his shirt. Takes off his own shirt. And he gives it to him and he says, wrap him in this. Use this as a shroud and bury him in that. What would we do to have the shirt of the Prophet ﷺ? Can you imagine being buried in the clothing of the Prophet ﷺ? What an honor. What a blessing. And it, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear, this would not forgive his sins and what he had done wrong. But the Prophet ﷺ at that time is thinking of the son and putting himself in the son's shoes. Imagine what he feels like losing his father. That's empathy. The Prophet of Allah wasallam. very touching story. His grandson Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the son of Ali and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the younger of the two brothers, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah be pleased with both of them. The younger one, he used to stutter. The younger one, he used to stutter. He had a very severe stutter to the point where he could not even complete a sentence. It would take him forever to finish a sentence. And what makes it even worse is as a child, this is very, very traumatic and very detrimental to the development of a child. What makes it even more difficult is the fact that the older brother, Hassan radiallahu anhu, was very, very eloquent and well-spoken and a very gifted public speaker. So think about the pressure that they put on the younger brother, stuttering so much. And so he used to stutter so much. And you know when kids start to get a little bit older, they're four or five years old, they start to develop a little bit of, you know, courage and they like to talk. One time, one time the Prophet ﷺ is sitting with quite a few companions and his grandsons are sitting with him and the younger one who stutters, he starts to chime in and say something. Because they love their grandfather, they're used to talking to him, he starts to say something. And the Prophet ﷺ used to afford each and every person so much respect that when somebody would speak, he would become quiet. He would not just turn towards them with his face, he would turn towards them with his chest. And he would look at them while they spoke. And so he starts to speak and the Prophet ﷺ stops and turns towards him. And so everybody there also starts to listen. And the kid is stuttering so badly that it starts to become awkward. And some of the people naturally, not viciously, not maliciously, some of the people naturally, they start to kind of exchange some glances, almost feeling bad for the kid. Because he cannot even get through a single sentence. It starts to get really kind of like awkward. 
And the Prophet ﷺ never once interrupts him. He does not finish his sentence for him. But the companions, they say, they looked at the face of the Prophet ﷺ on how is he reacting. And they said he had a big old smile on his face. And he was looking at Hussein radiallahu ta'ala and was smiling and listening to him quietly. He didn't care if it took five minutes for him to finish what he was saying. But he let him finish what he was saying. And when he was done finishing, when he was finished saying whatever he was saying, the Prophet ﷺ at that time turns to everybody else that is sitting there because everyone was so weirded and awkwarded out. He turns to everyone and he says, لَقَدْ وَرَثَهَا عَنْ عَمِّهِ مُوسَى He inherited this from his uncle Moses. Referring to Musa salam and the fact that he used to stutter. That don't feel bad for him, envy him that he shares a trait with one of the great prophets of God, Musa alayhi salam. He turned that negative into a positive, putting himself in that child's shoes and realizing what he needed at that time. He needed love and support and acceptance for who he was, for wh wh however he was. And the last story about empathy that I'll share here is... A very touching story, Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu he was an Ansari, he had gone out for one of the campaigns, the military expeditions. And when the, the Prophet sallallahu did not go on this particular journey, so when they would return back, he would go outside of Medina to welcome them back. And all the kids whose fathers had gone out, they would also go out there to welcome their fathers and their brothers and their uncles, etc. home. So they're out there and they're all waiting for people to come back. And as slowly everybody is coming back, and the Prophet would wait and then he would come at the back of the army. He would be at the end watching over everybody, the shepherd. And the, the son of Bashir radiallahu ta'ala who is standing there, climbed up on a rock looking for his dad. And he sees people keep on coming. He keeps asking, have you seen my dad? Have you seen my dad? And he doesn't see his father. Finally, when he sees the Prophet ﷺ riding in the back, he realizes that means my father did not return. And he starts to cry. This child starts to cry because he realizes my dad isn't coming back home. He died. And the Prophet ﷺ stops. He's riding his animal. He stops and he picks him up and he hugs him and he continues to hold him until he stops crying. He calms down. And then he says to him, he says, Ama tarda an akuna ana abak wa aisha ummak? Don't cry, don't worry. If you need a father, I will be your father from today, and Aisha will be your mother from today. To embrace somebody else's child as your own. Empathy. And look how it beautifies a person's conduct and character. How it beautifies a person. This quality is central to the prophetic character. And so when we talk about the beauty that Islam had and how Islam drew people in, it was through the beauty of Islam and the spirituality that Imam Umar talked about and the character and the akhlaq and the dealings of the Muslims. But centrally at the core of that is this idea of empathy, cultivating an attitude of empathy that will beautify our conduct. And when that begins to beautify our conduct, that will create that exemplary community that people will rush and flock to. Right now, people accept Islam in spite of us. It is solely the truth of Islam and the miracle of the Qur'an that people accept Islam. Then people will accept Islam actually because of us and due to us. Allah will make us the means and the sabab, but we have to qualify ourselves for that. And I'll finally end with just a really interesting thought. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, a great scholar from the history of Islam, one of the great leaders of Muslims and the Summa, he, saw, he actually found out, somebody informed him that one of his sons had purchased a ring worth a thousand dirhams, a thousand silver coins, like a thousand bucks. He purchased a ring that cost a thousand dollars. He called his son and he said, I've heard that you bought a thousand dollar ring. He said, yes. He said, what I want you to do I want you to sell it. Take that money and go feed a thousand people. And then just take one dollar, buy a one dollar ring, and inscribe on that ring, Rahimallahu imra an arafa qadra nafsihi. May God have mercy on the man who recognizes and understands his 
limitation in his capacity. Our limitation in terms of who we are and our reality and our capacity to be able to care for others and to do good for others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability uh, to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his noble character. Wa jazakum Allah khairan. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.